Let's start with the clemency offer. Um, it was reported in The Guardian today that Assad might get clemency from the United States and Britain. I don't know if they have the power to do that. But uh, if he allows some kind of U.N. conference to take place, tell, tell me what is behind this idea? Well, I think it's what's behind it is the lunatic fringe in the foreign policy establishment. It blows my mind along with yours and everyone else who has an ounce of common sense. I mean, Assad, I don't understand how moving Assad out of Damascus and putting him in Geneva somehow will make him a truthful person willing to uphold agreements that he was perfectly willing to break at home. And if he looks around the region, every leader that's left uh, the confines of his presidential palace is either near death or dead. So I don't think Assad has necessarily any illusion that he would take the deal, but I'm right there with you. I, I, I'm blown away that it's even conceived of and offered. I mean, really, you've got people who fought for 15-plus months for their own freedom and survival, whatever stripes they may be, and we're going to step in and say this guy is okay? Uh, I mean, I just, I just find we're on the wrong side of history and the wrong side of the people there, I think. Yeah, it, it really makes no sense. I think we've already fumbled this so bad by allowing the U.N. to pretend like they're taking care of things. And then this, I mean, it just it blows my mind. I want to move to the, the first part of our story, which was uh, the CIA in Turkey. Uh, why is al Qaeda bad, but the Muslim Brotherhood is good? Why are we deciding, OK, well, we don't want al Qaeda to get guns, which obviously everyone here agrees with. But arming the Muslim Brotherhood or allowing guns to get into the hands of the Muslim Brotherhood, that's OK. Well, to me, it's not okay, and there isn't enough difference. I mean, we've had this debate for more than a decade when it comes to al-Qaeda and the Taliban in Afghanistan. It happens in a lot of different places. Somehow people who want to kill us a little less and maybe are a little less murderous are somehow okay to deal with, and we should find a way to weave them into the political fabric of an emerging, fragile democracy. And that's what we went through with Afghanistan. I just don't see how it makes that much sense in places like Syria. They, they are there in Syria, Egypt, and other places. They're a reality. But we should be trying to weaken, starve, marginalize that part of the opposition uh, and really try to empower even small branches of the opposition that might be less Islamist uh, and maybe more of a fruitful uh, uh, organization with which to build a positive future. But Muslim Brotherhood, their ideology, their view of the Middle East, their, their view of America, is really not that far different from al-Qaeda's. Hey, Stephen, this is Will Kane. I want to return to something you said just a moment ago. You said you don't understand why someone would think enticing Bashar al-Assad to Geneva would make him any more truthful than he is in Damascus. But could it be possible that the United States and, 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 and the U.K. are offering this clemency to bring him to Geneva? Would that make him more vulnerable, if not more truthful? Well, I don't think he has any intention of leaving his country. Uh, and I don't think he intends to leave the safety of his own forces as long as they can keep him protected where he is. But in theory, uh, would that make him more vulnerable if he left the country for whatever reason? And would that make him more vulnerable internally? Yeah, well, I think he could only be a one-way ticket. I don't think he could leave and ever come back. Uh, and most of these megalomaniacs don't find that an attractive offer. Uh, but uh, it, it is part of negotiating strategy to see if you might be able to get him out of his comfort zone, out of a command center, right. and see whether things might splinter there and present you with better options, aside from Assad as a person. Uh, but uh, my fear would be Assad is not the same thing as the military. You take Assad out of the equation, the military may still use brutal force and may still endure a lengthy civil war in Syria. So, Stephen, Amy Holmes here. Uh, apparently, a report today the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, said that this isn't even going to happen, that Bashar al-Assad is not going to leave office. It's unfeasible. So the Russians don't even think this. But when we first saw the reports that the, Brit the Brits and the Americans might even grant it, it suggested to me that a lesson that would be learned from this is that if Russia is your friend, you get a free ticket to Switzerland. If the United States is your friend, you get a free ticket to the International Criminal Court. Or in the case of Gaddafi, you're dead. So in terms of world diplomacy, does this make the United States look like basically the weaker of our world powers? 
Well, at the moment, we are weak. Uh, now, I don't think the United States, properly informed, properly motivated, can shape events unlike any power in human history. We are not so led, we are not so motivated and organized at the moment. And frankly, Syria may not be the end-all and be-all for what American foreign policy needs to accomplish right now, but it is risky and it is important. Uh, we, we really are very far into this, and the Obama administration and a lot of sort of the middle-of-the-road Republicans, I mean, John McCain went to Egypt and met with the Muslim Brotherhood, so there's a little bit of a Republican sort of being washed into let's embrace the less bad guys uh, approach to navigating these, these tricky uh, situations. Uh, but I think that eventually the Syrian people are going to remove Assad. And it may take a long time, and it's likely to be very unpleasant. I just don't want it to be the U.S. military forces. I don't think we need another direct engagement. Frankly, I don't see why we would presume to know more than the Turks and others who have a lot of capability and a lot stronger national interest in getting this right to do it themselves. And if we're backing mm -hmm. them up, not in that territory, I'm okay with that.